On the topic of Strada Bianca, their official Instagram page shared a photo of the race showing yet another Lotto Destiny rider having issues with their front wheel and tyre. So you might remember last week we talked about how Lotto Destiny rider Thomas de Ghent's hookless tyre blew off the rim in the UAE Tour. Well, this latest picture from the Strada Bianca shows one of his teammates appearing to have the same problem. Again, in the photo, we see the tyre and foam insert has detached from the wheel and the rider was forced to carry his bike. Following De Ghent's crash, the UCI has said they'll review hookless rims and tubeless tyres as a matter of urgency. Meanwhile, the team's tyre sponsor, Vittoria, has issued a statement saying that hookless system wasn't to blame for this crash. They said it's crucial to clarify that the rim's failure resulted from an impact from an object, in this case a rock, and is unrelated to the hookless rim design. The force was so severe that it tore apart the tyre insert. So that's very much in line with what you, how you're describing the gravel of that event, that it's actually quite aggressive and therefore it's quite likely that he did hit something quite severe. I think mm. I think that statement refers to the UAE tour, which oh. was a road tour. Oh, right. I see. Which is probably the opposite. It's probably the smoothest road in the history of... With zero rocks world. on. <laughs> with zero rocks on. Well, they're saying he managed to find a rock, so who knows. <laughs> They also insisted it's not a compatibility issue amongst the components. Meanwhile, wheel sponsor Zip has said they're working with a team to understand what happened. Hello, Emily from the future here. Since we recorded this, Zip has put out another statement agreeing that a rock caused the first incident at the UAE tour. They say the level of impact caused severe damage to the tyre and rim and would have done so regardless of rim design. They say their rims comply with regulations and are proven safe. And now back to Jimmy. There's definitely a lot of comments I've noticed on videos. I I know we always talk about not reading the comments, but I like to have a little skim <laughs> when we're talking about a topic that's going to have opinion because it's always good to know what our audience is. I'm thinking. glad you look at them because I don't. I honestly don't look at them, and then I get a message from you. You screenshot them to me, so I end up seeing them as a as a byproduct. I monitor that. them. I guess what <laughs> I look for is like themes, and yep. there is definitely a theme that people are nervous slash scared slash unhappy with hookless. I, I'm not unhappy with it because I don't have any wheels which are hookless, but I would be annoyed if I ended up with a bike that had hookless wheels on it because I think I'd just be, it'd be in my head when I'm going down a descent. Like I'm not, I, I don't want it. Sorry. I'm glad that the Van Rysel that we got lent recently for a video project didn't have hookless wheels. I was like, oh, thank God for that. I've got a set of zip. Three F3s? Three, F three S's. Yeah. So like the, the cheap zips which are still, which is like still expensive yeah 900 quid or mm -hmm. something rather uh and if you remember when we first talked about hookless on the podcast that was the point where where i learned that you didn't even wits, know yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i've not had any issues with them but i rode them um in spain when we went bike packing mm. i've got it's a lie i do have one set of hookless wheels and they're gravel specific wheels they're some of the parkours but they only ever ridden at 30 psi so it doesn't matter it's the road hookless, which is like, mm, is that going to go wrong? And I just, I don't want that in my head. So I think an interesting thing is that hookless wheels are definitely not new to the Pro Peloton. So we asked Nick, Pro Bike Mechanic Nick. Um, so he says that those exact zip wheels have been in the Pro Peloton for about four years. The tires have been around for about a year. And he thinks the inserts are new. And he his speculation is... The unique thing about that setup, or perhaps the unique thing about that setup, is the foam inserts, and they might actually be the cause of these issues because they were definitely used on both of the explosions, whatever you want to call them. What would it do? Would it compress and like push the tire out of the so I channel? If these are the tires and foam inserts that I think they are, I actually spoke to someone at Vittoria at one of the trade shows I've been to recently specifically about these inserts. So the inserts of Vittoria as well? I believe so, yes. Um, it would make sense that they are. Mm. I'm pretty certain they are. Um, and it was that the mountain bike ones are designed to protect the rim, whereas the road ones are designed to make the, the tire still rideable if you do get a puncture. Yeah. And as a result of that, they're quite big and boofy. So perhaps the big and boofy is what gives it a push when there's air moving around. Who knows? It's weird for it to happen <laughs> twice. Yeah. In consecutive events, basically. Maybe it's just bad luck. 
It's definitely bad PR, isn't it, really, for the brand? Same team. Yeah. yeah. Bad for Vittoria. Bad for Hookless. Bad for Hookless. Bad for hookless. It, but the thing is, that it might even be user error. So it might be the mechanics are setting it up wrong or not following the, the, the recommended something. Rather. Obviously, we don't know at this point. If people's tires are blowing off anyway without the inserts in, yeah. in the real world, which has happened. People have been posting it on YouTube yeah. all over the place. Because of weird situations, either it's like air pressure or temperature or they've just put slightly too much PSI in and the instructions on the side of the tire are not clear enough. Yeah. It's happening. The user so error thing is a, it, it's an odd argument, isn't it? Because even if it is user error, like why do you have to be an in, an expert to be able to pump your tire up? And, I think that's and the not... crux of the issue with consumer products. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't have clear. to be an expert to be able to be safe on your tire. But who knows? It, it, it's all speculation at this point. The UCI are looking into it, so... What happens if they ban hookless? Well, presumably all of the... Envy and Zip have to remake all of their wheels. <laughs> yeah. And Dov was telling me it's not even that much cheaper to create a hookless wheel. It's only because they're making so many... Like a company the size of Parkour, uh, owned by our friend Dov, the, because it's not multiplied so many times, the cost of just keeping everything hooked is not as bad. Whereas for Envy and Zip, because they're making thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of wheel sets... I can't imagine That's Envy. That's the issue. Envy are probably not huge. Well, they're Zip definitely much bigger are. than Parkour. Oh, yeah, yeah, of <laughs> so course, yeah. Of course. It's obviously worth it for them. Yeah. I think that's the issue. One of Nick's conspiracy theories was also that um, hookless slander is being started by wheel companies that don't want to have to remake their molds and convert to hookless. So they purposely don't want hookless to catch on because they want to keep doing what they're doing. Which surely it works both ways. Though, uh, yeah, it? it does exactly. I don't know. I think there's a lot. Uh, so some of the wheel brands who are still making hooked wheels are being sought after by people who don't want to ride hookless. So it's kind of a good that, thing. There. That is what I have found from skimming over the comments on our previous video is there is definitely a decent proportion of people which are actively against hookless and therefore are actively looking for products that are not that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's definitely an interesting one for us to keep tabs on going forward and see what happens. Because yeah, if they ban them, I guess that still doesn't stop Zip from selling their wheels. If you know they don't have to like write off all of their stock and move to something else, but the pros need to be on something else. Yeah, but it's a bit of a trickle down, isn't it? If it's if it if they're banned for being dangerous, then you probably want to pivot quite quickly. Yeah, but they also ban disc brakes at a point for being dangerous. Yeah, true, true, true.